10.2a, factor trinomials, reverse FOIL. Now recall that when we FOIL, we get, take our a times our c plus our a times our d plus bc plus our b times our d. We are distributing our a and we're distributing our b. In other words, the first term multiplies to the first term and the last term multiplies to the last term. The inside and add outside must add to the middle terms. We're talking about something of this, ax squared plus bx plus c, where this is our middle term. Now this may take some trial and error. I have included a couple of some notes here that you might want to add that will help you with um, factoring trinomials. One thing here is that our bx that we're talking about for our middle term, this right here, comes from the ad and the bc. Whether those are plus or minus, that's what we're going to get. And then on this first one, okay, so when we look at this first over here, ax squared plus bx plus c, if the last term is positive, we're going to add the inside and outside terms. The sign in the boxes will be whatever the middle term is. In this case, it would be plus, but if we had ax squared, um, minus bx plus c, then we would have negative in our boxes. It'll be whatever that middle term is. In this other one, ax squared plus e bx minus c, if that last term is negative, we're going to subtract the inside and outside. One box will have a positive and one box will have a negative based on where we need it and whether this is plus or or minus. So let's look at example one, keeping in mind the things that I told you. This is positive, this is positive. What that means is that in our boxes, or in other words our parentheses, we're going to have plus in both of them since our last term is positive and our middle term is positive. We are going to add the outside and inside terms. First thing that we need to do once we've got that all figured out is to look at our three. And we're looking at how many ways we can factor three. Well, I only know of one. I only know of three times one. Okay, when we look at ten, First thing that comes to mind is 2 times 5, although you could also have 10 times 1, but this is what we would call the extreme, and we don't generally use it, so we don't look at it first. So now I'm going to put my 2 and 5 into place, because that's how I get my 10, multiplying the 2 times the 5, and I got my 3x squared by multiplying the 3x times the x. So we've ensured that we get the outs, the, the very first term and the very last term. Now the, what we're looking at is the trial and error part comes from looking at the outside and inside terms. We are adding outside and inside. I should put, put that down. Well, we get 15x plus 2x, which gives us 17x. 17x is not what we want, so this is where the trial and error comes in. We are going to try it again. 
We still know there's only one way of getting the 3x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exchange my 2 and my 5. I'm going to put them in different places. We'll put the 5 in the first box, put our 2 in the second box. Well, we do know that we can have plus in those, so we can take care of that. Now, let's look at our outside and our inside. We've got 6x plus 5x. We are adding, so that gives us 11x. Voila, we've got it. So there is my answer, without too much trial and error. Let's look at example 2. Well, we have a negative for the last term. That tells me that I'm going to subtract outside and the inside. Okay, so again, I'm going to put my parentheses. We are going to have plus and minus, but I don't put those in until the last because I really don't know where I'm going to need them. When I think about 12, I can think 12 is 3 times 4, it is also 2 times 6. Only one way of factoring 3, which is 1 times 3. We'll go ahead and go with the first one to start with. I don't know which one's going to be right, so we're, this is the trial and error. So I'm going to put 3x in and x, oops, sorry, 4x, and then I'm going to put my 3 in. Well, I cannot put my 3 in the first box because it would give me a common factor, and that's something to be aware of when you're doing this. So I'm going to put my 1 in the first box, my 3 in the other box. Now I am subtracting, so when I do my outside and my inside, I'm going to get 9x minus 4x. We're just taking the difference. We're not worried about what we actually have for signs here. That does not give me 16, so I need to try this again. I can't just interchange my 3 and my 1 because I'll have common factors again. So what that means is that I need to try a different factor for 12 because I only have one way of factoring 3. So we're going to do the 2x and the 6x. Now I need to put my 3 in. I can't put my 3 in with my 6 because it would give me a common factor, so I'm going to put it in with my 2 and I'll put 1 in with my 6. Now again, I'm taking the difference here. So I've got 2x minus 18x, and I still, I, I'm just looking at what I get for the difference. Well, that will give me 16, but note that I need a positive 16. So since I need a positive 16, that means in order to make Six, a positive 16, I need my large number to be positive, I need my smaller number to be negative. I get 2x by multiplying 2 times 1, so I want to put my negative in front of my 1, and I get my 18 by taking 3 times 6, so I'm going to put my positive in front of my 3. We got a funny positive. Because I've ensured that I got my 3, and my 12, and I've now made sure that I got my middle, that tells me that I am done, and this would be my answer.